He might not. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. Now I want to show you some things in the Word of God this morning and bring you up to date just a little bit about where I'm convinced we are on God's calendar. Revelation 13. I'll give you just a second to get settled down. Everybody settle down. No talking. Please, nobody else get up. No kids have any business getting up at all. Every kid, be still. Revelation 13. Now the Bible predicted a time here that people used to laugh at. Verse 16. Revelation 13 and verse 16. And he causeth all, this is the Antichrist that will be on the earth at this time, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And notice the terminology the Bible used there, that in. We usually think of it as on. Which, of course, it is, but the Bible specifically used the word in, right hand, or in the forehead, like an implant. And um, then their forehead, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. That's the Antichrist. A beast in the book of Revelation represents a king or an a kingdom. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, threescore, and six. Now I want to preach to you just for a few minutes on 666 is coming. The Bible prophesies of a seven year period called the Great Tribulation, a time of unheard of destruction, trouble, and problems in this world. Matthew 24, the Lord said it would be a time like the world had never seen before or it would never see again. The question is this morning, how close are we to that time taking place? I want to present to you some facts that will startle you this morning. It's going to be shocking to you, some of this. But it's, uh, it's true, it's been researched, and it is documented. We are at the point for the Antichrist kingdom to be set up. We're there. I've heard people say, well, doesn't this have to happen? Doesn't this have to happen? There is nothing that has to take place scripturally before the Lord could come back and rapture us out of here and take us home. Nothing, nothing. It could happen today. The coming of Christ is what we call imminent. That means it could happen right now. The Lord could take us out of this building this morning and home to be in heaven. I read something in a paper the other day of a, a book that Nostradamus printed. This, you know, you have a lot of these great psychics and prophets like he was, and I'm not saying he was a Bible prophet. He wasn't, he was not. But he, the old boy, he is getting something from somewhere. And uh, you know what he said? They were all stirred up about it. He said in his book that on September 11th, this has been years and years and years ago, he said on September the 11th, 1994, which will be this coming Saturday, 693,000 people will ascend directly into heaven without dying. Isn't that weird? You say, well, it ain't going to happen this Saturday. No, it probably won't. And I sure hope and pray there's more than 693,000. That's getting on down into the Jehovah Witness number figure. They only got 144,000. But I believe there's more than 693,000 saved people. But what I'm saying is, all even the weird prophets of our generation have all looked forward to this period of time that you and I are living in and saying something big is going to happen. 
Do you know that every 2,000 years God does something major? You know, from creation there until around the time of Abraham, the flood, and then 2,000 years went by and Jesus died on the cross, and now 2,000 more years have almost gone by, and we have 1,000 years of peace left. That's with the Lord sitting on the throne after He comes back. Do you realize this morning that we are in the last tenth of the last tenth of the sixth millennium? If God gives man six millenniums on earth, pictured by the six days of creation, one day represents a thousand years, a thousand years represents a day. If God does that, we are in the last one-tenth of the last tenth of the last thousand years before Jesus comes back. We are in the last few days and moments before the Lord comes. I have somewhere in my possession, I don't know if I still got it, a rock album, doing all my stuff on rock music. There is a rock singer by the name of Nina Hagen, Hagen, H-A-G-E-N, is it pronounced in Germany? And Nina Hagen, when she sings, there's like five voices come out of her mouth. Some of them deep and gruffy like a man, some of them high like a woman. And she's got this picture of her like the Virgin Mary and a baby in her arms on her album. And all her songs talk about, about is UFOs coming to this world and taking people out of here. The world recognizing that there's going to be something drastic happen in the near future. They are trying their best to make contact. The United States government just spent recently, I forgot how many millions of dollars trying to make contact with something or someone out there. They just can't believe that we're the only ones here. And we're not. And brother, they are something in outer space, but it's not little green men, and they don't eat Reese's Pieces. And they, and you, and you, uh, and you, they're not your friends, I promise you. They are not your friends. You say, well, I believe they're going to come and teach us how to get along with people and bring peace on earth. No, uh, they're coming as demons in the tribulation to add to the torment of the wicked. And they're going to say, I'm going to tell you what happened to all them people. We took them up and they're having to be rehabilitated because they believe that the Bible's true and they believe in sin and hell and judgment and all that stuff. So we had to take them to Alpha Centauri, 20 million light years from here, and they're going to be rehabilitated. That's how they're going to explain the rapture. When we all disappear. That's going to happen, brother. That's going to happen. How close are we? Well, just listen to this. Listen to this. The Omni magazine recently made the say Cash and credit cards will soon be obsolete. They say the cashless society, it's in the cards. Uh, Jordan's president... That Hussein, not Saddam Hussein, but Jordan's president with the, the name Hussein said that the world is headed for a dictatorship. Now, Bible preachers have preached that for hundreds of years. When them old time preachers got up a hundred years ago in the 1800s and they said, one of these days there's going to be a man and this man's going to run the whole world and he's going to make everybody put a mark on their hand or on their forehead and you're going to do your business transactions by that mark. People laughed at him. People made fun of him. They said there's no way in the world that could happen. What's going to happen to money? You know as well as I know. How many of you have ever got a letter from your bank or a phone call from your bank and your bank said what they, you, they wanted you to use what's called direct deposit? Which means your check don't come to you. It goes directly to the bank. They deposit it and you never see your money. You just write checks for it. Anybody ever been told about that? Alright. That's just right around here in a little nowhere. Mary in North Carolina. You saw the hands that went up. You know what? This is a move towards a cashless society. Now picture it this morning. You picture if this happens the way I'll describe it to you. In the last few years, the world has taken on a new form. As the Berlin Wall came down, you hear more and more talk on the end of the Cold War about what's called the United States of Europe. 
bringing all nations together. Everybody's talking nowadays about the world working together and our, our the one global community. And we're all really here together and to save each other and to save the planet and all that stuff. What the world is looking for this morning is a man that can lead us out of our problem. The world wants a man who can solve the drug problem. The biggest problem America has right now, they say, it's not really, it's sin. But drugs, drugs and crime, right? Drugs and crime. It's not really the crime, it's the drugs. The drugs cause the crime. When a person gets on cocaine, they'll do anything to get more ca- cocaine. Uh, somebody just told me that this week. Young lady struggling with a cocaine addiction. She said, you wouldn't believe. She said, it's taking over McDowell County. That's what she told me just this week. It's everywhere. And young people by the thousand are getting on it. Now, what we need is somebody to solve the drug problem. Do you know how a man could solve the drug problem? You know how man, you said get more police. That won't do it. You know how man solved the drug problem? You got to get rid of money. You've got to fix it where businesses are run through computers and into the bank and through the system and do all the business above board and level. Get rid of the cash. You say, well, brother Danny, will people accept that? There's going to be something devastating happen. If you'd come out right now and said everybody in America's got to have a mark put on their hands, people would rebel. They'd say, no way. You know why? Because the Spirit of God is still here. Now, when the Spirit of God leaves and that rapture leaves, you see the Spirit of God's going to be taken off this world for the tribulation. That's one reason why I know we're going up in the rapture. Because He's in us. And He said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. So, brother, if He goes, we're going with Him because He ain't going to leave us. Amen? So we're going to be walking along one of these days and we're going to say, I tell you people, it's going to come and something's going to jerk us and we're going to go out. And we're going to vanish. We're going to be gone. You might be riding that school bus and sitting there with your Bible in your lap and they might be laughing at you and say, ha, ha, ha. She claims to be... Whoa. I've been up too long, man. i got on some bad dope. Uh, I don't know what happened to me. You might be driving down the road and boy, all of a sudden, bam! That trumpet sound, you hear your name and out you're going. It's like when we used to play, uh, you ever played the hide and go seek? Anybody in here played hide and go seek? Raise your hand. Oh, you young people, you just, you're pitiful. Uh, you don't, you don't know what's going on. Well, uh, one of them is it. <laughs> and whoever it is has to go somewhere and count to 50 and everybody else goes and hide. And you go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, blah, blah, blah. Like that, you know, and everybody's hiding. And then you jump up and you hollers out in the backyard, Ray, you're not! Here I come! And brother, I don't care. You better scoot up under the porch. Uh, you better get behind the apple tree. I mean, you better get in the barn or under the car or, or in the trunk or wherever you're going uh, to hide because it is coming to find you. And if he finds you, then you got to be it the next time. But I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this evening or this morning, that's what the Lord's doing in heaven. He's been up there counting the two thousand on us. He's up there counting, count. He said, "How much longer I got to count, Father?" One of these days, the Lord's going to say, "All right, Son, Jesus." Go get them. And the Lord's going to say, Ready or not, here I come. He's not going to wait on you to pray. He's not going to wait on you to go over and straighten out something with your neighbor. He's not going to wait on you and your wife to get things patched up. He's not going to wait on you to pay that bill that you owe. He's not going to wait. It's in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Boom! You're done gone before this world even realizes He's been here. Listen to this. Newsweek magazine said smart cards may make the old science fiction notion of a cashless society real. That's Newsweek magazine. See how they're preparing. Listen, this is already being tested in the Marine Corps in Paris Island, South Carolina. If you're a Marine, when a Marine makes a purchase on base, he plugs the card into a small terminal and the sum is automatically deducted from his pay. And Newsweek said the base, Paris Island, South Carolina, is already become a cashless Economy, even the telephones take the smart card. And when the president holds up these little cards that say this is going to be for universal health care, and said about, they say in the next few years every American will be required to have that card. All that is is a step forward, is a step forward to getting it on the hand. Because after people get cards, what's going to happen? 
Somebody's going to lose their car. Or somebody can steal your car and go to Penny's or, or Sears or, and, or Walmart and have a big time with it. So somebody's going to say, hey, we have such a problem. AIDS is spreading. Disease is so bad. The, the, the drug problem is so bad. We're going to have to implement it on the skin. And the church will be gone. And the strong delusion will be here. We're seeing the world set up for that. We're sheltered right here in these mountains. By the way, I want to tell you, I don't have an outline this morning. I'm just reading you off some things. I have, a, I have a, some news reports. But, by the way, you know what I've just thought about recently? I've thought about how the devil would do anything in his power to put the fire out in these mountains of North and South Carolina. He hates this Bible Belt. He hates it. You know where Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons have a harder time than anywhere? Right here. They say they can't get nobody to join you know why? Because even sinners around this part of the country got better sense than to join a religion that don't even offer them nothing to start with. I mean, if there ain't no hell, what's using them going to their church and sitting there listening to boring Bible studies? I mean, just go fishing or something, man. And if you ain't one of the hundred chosen 144,000, you ain't going to heaven. No, I wouldn't fool with it. I'd just say, forget you, man. I'm going, I'm going to play ball or something and just let the Lord take care of that. But they can't get a foothold in these mountains. Now, the New Age movement is sweeping this country. Brother, worshiping, uh, you know, the, these hippies that ain't... I believe some of them same people as at Woodstock 94 was the same ones as at the first Woodstock. Did you see their picture? I didn't see... A lot of I, I think they had on the same clothes that they wore in 1969. They still had that same old Volkswagen band, man, with the flowers on it. And they, they're ready. They're ready, man. This wall is getting ready. Getting ready. Getting ready to receive a dictator. By the, by the time these next two years is up, America's going to be willing to take anybody. I'm telling you. I'm telling you the truth. Lord in mercy, man. Uh, uh, they'll about have Jesse Jackson time. This thing's over with. I'm telling you, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. This world is getting ready and right for a leader. Just as sure as you're sitting here. You know what I believe the devil's doing? He's doing everything in his power to tear up churches in this part of the country because he knows here's where the missionaries come from. Here's where the old-fashioned fire still burns. Here's where the I've been in churches where I've seen these young people get fired up, maybe gone to South Carolina, way off somewhere, and the people don't even know the, they don't even know what it is. They see you start praising God, and they say, I've never seen nothing like that in my life. That's pitiful that people go to church all their life and don't even know what was going on in here a while ago. It's sad. You know what I heard? I believe the devil is doing everything in his power to stomp out the fire that's burning in this part of the country so the world will be in darkness. I, I heard the other day that the New Age headquarters is becoming Asheville, North Carolina and the mountains of North Carolina. Headquarters. They're just flocking to these mountains. You know, if you worship crystals and stuff like that, you, you're going to like this part of the country where you can see trees and grass. And, you know, it ain't all cement <laughs> like it is all up north. You're, you're attracted here. You know what I heard the other day? There was a report came on, a doctor on TV, and the doctor said this. He said, he, uh, he's out west, some, up north somewhere, and he said, all my patients that have AIDS, he said, when they come to me and say, how can I live the longest? He said, I recommend them moving to the Carolinas. We're sending them here. <laughs> Now, you reckon who's doing that? He said because of the weather and the night's not too hot, it's not too cold and all that. You reckon who's behind that? You think the devil don't soar over America every now and then and check this. There's L.A., there's Houston, there's Dallas, there's Miami, there's... And then he starts looking over in here, get back into these mountains and seeing these old grandmas on their knees praying, seeing these young people up raising their hand crying, seeing God moving, soul being saved. Don't you think the devil don't say, I hate that place. I hate it. I want to stomp it out. Don't you think he's not doing it? If you get mad and get your feelings hurt and all that, don't you realize that's just the devil tricking you because we're so close to the end? The Lord's coming back! 
You say, well, Brother Danny, some things just happened at church and I just couldn't go along. Listen, man, put your pacifier in your mouth and trim up your wings, brother. I mean, get right, get ready to meet the Lord. The Lord's coming back. You ain't got time to get your feelings hurt. Some of you in here this morning, all you're thinking about now is having to make more money and more money and how can you prosper? How much money are you going to have in the year 2020? You've been tricked by the devil! You better, listen, you better just realize that it's God that's going to take care of you. It's God that's going to supply your needs. It's God that gives you breath. It's God that gives you health. And it'll be God that takes care of you if you're here in 2020. You're a fool. You just lay up treasure for yourself and get out of the will of God. Listen, it's coming. It's coming. An extraordinary effort is now underway to build an interstructural, large-scale use of electronic data interchangeable with a national health care system, financial transaction systems, and interactive home services. What that means is the TV, your telephone, everything's going to run right to the computers. You'll be able to order your groceries off TV. Scan your hand across there. Pay for it. They say, man told me here, man, not long ago, he said video stores will be out of business in, in, in the near future. What they're going to do, they'll send you a thing. All, any movie a person wants to watch, all you have to do is punch it in your telephone. It pops up on your screen. And then it's billed on your telephone bill. He said, it's all going to be linked together and it's all the schools and all the businesses right in the one giant computer system. And then the guy's going to step out and say, I have come to solve the world's problems. MasterCard says all this will be done doing within five years. In Spain, dogs and cats are required by law to have microchip implants put in their body uh, to, to keep track of them. This is also in Norway, Portugal, Great Britain, Belgium, Ireland, New York City, and California. And now, so that people will stop baby swapping and kidnapping kids, they're considered doing it to identifying children. You remember back years ago, you didn't even have to have a Social Security card to use so old. And then they brought it down to like sec first grade. And then they brought it down to two years old. Now it's birth, brother. Now it's birth. The automatic ID news in April said everything that is being used in the military system has been or will be marked with a barcode. Even down to individual soldiers, everyone gets a barcode. At least 15 high schools in New York City are testing a pilot program using barcode identification and scanners to keep careful tabs on the students. We'll all be tagged in the end. That's what it says. Just how near is it? Let me read you this, and I'm going to give you one of these, and I'm going to close. Standardization News, February 1990. The European community has decided to utilize an identification mark, and it says one cannot market or sell a product unless it has the European comedy economy mark. One cannot market or sell a product. How close do you think we are? They develop scanners right now. I've got a picture of one, like a little gun, that's made to scan the numbers on your hand. We're in the last few days before the Lord comes back. Don't be tricked. Don't be tricked. Don't get your eyes off Jesus. Don't say, well, Brother Danny, I lived right for so long and I'm just tired of it. I'm going to just kind of loosen up and go out to sin a little bit. That's the devil tricking you. That's what that is. Don't be swept up with this world. Lord's coming back, son. I'd like for you to stand by your heads in prayer. Every head bowed, never eye closed. There's a lot more I could give you there, but I'm going to stop right there. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. I want to ask you a question. The question is, if the Lord come back today, are you ready? You say, oh preacher, I know I'm saved. Well, good. I'm glad. 
Now, the question is, are you living the way the Lord would have you to live? Some of you used to live right. You did live right. Now what's happened to you? You let the devil and the world get your attention. Maybe there's somebody here that's never, ever been saved. You've never been saved. Deep down inside, it scares you. When I start talking about the Lord coming back and us vanishing, it scares you. Why don't you come to this altar this morning? Some's already coming. Why don't you just get out of your seat? We're going to sing that old song, Just as I am without one plea. That thy blood was shed for me. He's coming, friend. I'm telling you, the Lord's coming soon. Maybe today. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe this week. He's coming soon. Is your life counting for Him? Heavenly Father, I pray for that man, or that woman, or that boy, or that girl, whoever it is, wherever they're sitting or standing, Lord, that You'd speak to their heart this morning. Help them to get ready to meet Thee in the air. And we'll thank You for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's dealing with your heart this morning. You be brave enough to come. Come on right now. Come on. Come on right now. Everybody say. speaking to you this morning while we sing. Come on. on. Move right now. Move right now. Get it right this morning. this morning.